so hello friends in previous video we have discussed about uh, bone disorder now in this video we will discuss the pharmacology involved in thyroid disorders so first we will look for the general physiology how thyroid hormone is formed so first i minus is uptaken by sodium iodide sympotor you are seeing iodine is uptaken into the cells okay there oxidation of i minus into i plus is done by peroxidase enzyme then after oxidation there will be iodination so iodine is added to tyrosine and there will be formation of mono iodo tyrosine clear and two iodine if combined to tyrosine then there will be formation of di iodo tyrosine and the fourth step is coupling in this dit plus dit will combine to form t4 okay is also called as levothyroxine or dit may combine with mit to form t3 that is tri iodo tyrosine getting the uh, fifth step is stored this is stored in combination with globulin clear this thyroxine will be stored in combination with globulin and the next is under stimulation of TSH T4 will be released in plasma clear and the last is your peripheral conversion will take place peripheral conversion means conversion of T4, T4 into T3 this is the peripheral conversion and T3 will perform its action clear so this is the physiology behind the thyroxine hormone synthesis and its release so we will mainly give drugs which are targeting this transporter or peroxidase enzyme or there will be inhibition of release or there will be inhibition of peripheral conversion so these are the group of drugs we are going to study so first coming to the i2 uptake inhibitor these are the outdated drugs mechanism of action was inhibiting the sodium iodine sympotor okay the drugs is sodium thiocyanate sodium perchlorate, but they are outdated now coming to the next hormone synthesis inhibitor okay so the drug group is thionamides it includes two we will discuss here two that is carbimazole okay and propyl thiouracil because this is the main enzyme which is taking part in your T3 synthesis, oxidation, iodination at each step peroxidase enzyme will participate. So this carbimazole will inhibit this peroxidase enzyme. Clear? So there will be inhibition of the formation of the thyroxine but there will be no effect on already formed T4 and T3. And because of this, this uh, group of drugs that is carbimazole have slow onset. So they can be used for only maintenance treatment of hyperthyroidism. Clear? The next one is propyl thiouracil. Mechanism of action is inhibition of peroxidase as well as it also inhibit peripheral conversion. Clear, propyl thiouracil also inhibit peripheral conversion. So, T3 action maximum seen up to 24 hours. So, it has fast onset because it is also inhibiting peripheral conversion. Okay, it was not inhibiting that peripheral conversion. So, propyl thiouracil has fast onset of action. So, it can be given for maintenance treatment as well as this propyl thiouracil. Very important. It's the drug of choice for thyrotoxicosis. So, propyl thiouracil is the drug of choice for your thio thyrotoxicosis. So, we have discussed thionamides. It includes two carbimazole and propyl thiouracil. Now some difference differences between these two carbimazole and propyl thiouracil. So this is in product form, okay, inactive, and after going to liver, it is converted into active form that is methimazole. So carbimazole will convert into methimazole. This is active form, and this is one of the one more reason for its slow onset of action. Clear? And it must be given through oral route because it must go to liver for its activation. This is active drug, so it can be given for orally for maintenance treatment. In case of maintenance treatment, you can you give this drug orally, or in case of crisis, you should give this drug through IV IV infusion. The next that it has less plasma protein binding, so more free drug is available for action, so it can be given in low dose. Okay, more and it has more plasma protein binding. That is propyl thiouracil has more plasma protein binding capacity, so less free drug available, so it is given in high dose. It has long T-half, 6 to 8 hours, so it had good compliance. It has short T-half, so it had poor compliance. Okay, so this drug, uh, this uh, carbimazole is drug of choice for your maintenance treatment of hyperthyroidism. Mind it, it is drug of choice for the maintenance treatment of hyperthyroidism due to this reason, long T-half and less requirement. Clear? And this is a drug of choice for your thyrotoxicosis, this propyl thyroidacil. Now side effects is acne and folliculitis. Okay the bone marrow depression may be there more teratogenicity so can cause uh, fetal aplastic coitus okay that is absence of CO. okay so these are the side effects which are associated with these drugs now what are the indication of these drugs so it, this drug can be used for maintenance treatment of hyperthyroidism okay for non-pregnant you should give carbimazole and methimazole and for pregnant you should use propyl thyroracil for first trimester and second and third trimester you should use carbimazole clear so carbimazole, methimazole and propyl thyroxyl you can use non-pregnant these two and in pregnant for first trimester you, you should give this drug okay now the next is thyrotoxicosis drug of choice we have discussed propyl thyroxyl okay IV root you, you should give now before thyroid gland surgery before thyroid gland surgery you also give this drug clear 
so you start thionamides four to six weeks before surgery so that the store of t4 will be less so there will be no risk of intraoperative thyrotoxicosis clear so because of this reason you give this drug before thyroid gland surgery in case of cancer or graves disease or adenoma now this drug is also given before radio i2 i2 therapy okay radio iodine therapy that will destroy your thyroid follicles so in that it, that will increase t43 release so there will be decrease risk of thyrotoxicosis so we should give these drugs clear now the next one is your hormone releasing inhibitor clear it includes iodide such as sodium iodide potassium iodide and lugol's i2 indication thyrotoxicosis treatment mechanism of action that uh, it acts on thyroid follicle cell inhibit your endocytosis and proteolysis clear so the t4 endocytosis by the cells and then it will release extracellularly okay so this uh, drugs hormone releasing inhibitor will inhibit this exocytosis of t4 and t4 combined with globulin here so there is proteolysis needed for the uh, for removing your this okay for removing of globulin we need proteolysis so it also inhibit proteolysis so t4 is not freed from this thyro globulin clear so it, it will decrease your release so it will decrease plasma t3 within 24 to 8 hour, 48 hours so it has fast onset of action drawback no effect on thyroid hormone synthesis so whenever iodide therapy is discontinuous there will be reflex excessive release of t4 and t3 so there will be recurrence of the thyrotoxicosis coming to the indication of this so iodides are always started before four to six hours of ptu in treatment of thyrotoxicosis clear now before thyroid gland surgery you should also give this drug it will decrease blood supply of thyroid follicles decrease shrinkage of gland okay so surgery is easy to perform and very less incidence of bleeding is seen during surgery okay now it is also added in cup syrup because it causes irritation to mucosal cells so it can be used as ex expected torrent because it will increase expression of your sputum clear so it will be used as expect torrent now it also applied locally such as because it has antiseptic property because of having irritable properties to microorganism so it can be used in ointment it also interfere with growth of fungus so can be used for the treatment of sporotrichosis side effects the first one is mucositis running nose watering of eyes buccal mucositis swollen salivary gland and siluria i2 in skin can cause phototoxicity okay hypersensitive reaction may be there that will lead to interstitial nephritis it can also increase your risk of teratogenicity so contraindicated in pregnancy the next group of drug is peripheral conversion blocker so it will block conversion of t4 to t3 it include drug propranol ptu steroids okay it include prednisolone now it has fast action so it can be used for treatment of thyrotoxicosis now how will treat thyrotoxicosis so whenever t3 increases hypertension will be there heart rate increase tremors will be there insomnia will be there sweating seizures so these are all associated with this thyrotoxicosis so first we will give basic life support then we will give intravenous ptu okay that is propyl thyroidase 100 mg now best drug we will this is the best drug for thyrotoxicosis we have discussed now we will give propranol okay 2 mg iv okay, in a state dose and this will this propranol will inhibit conversion of t2 t4 to t3 we have discussed here peripheral conversion is inhibited by propranol so it will con inhibit conversion of t t4 to t3 it will also decrease heart rate it will also decrease arrhythmia it will also decrease tremors it will also decrease anxiety so these symptoms can be controlled by propranol you can also give lugol i2 okay like i2 or radio stop i2 you should also give esteroid hydrocorticosterone once stabilized patient then give hydrocorticosterone orally so first you give iv root then after stabilization you should give through uh, orally root you can also administer old calcium channel blocker anti epileptic drugs for decreasing seizure cool blanket for increasing sweating so this is the treatment of your thyrotoxicosis now discussing about radio i2 therapy so radio I iodine that can destroy your thyroid gland so it can be used in destroying thyroid gland Pharmacokinetic, it is given orally, okay, which is taken up by thyroid follicles, emit alpha, beta, and gamma, gamma rays. Beta rays are, are the most destructive and it will destroy 0.5 to 1.5 millimeter square of surrounding area. After 2 to 3 months, there will be complete destruction of the gland and that will be emitted by kidney. Okay, and this destruction is from inside to outside. So, this is the basic principle of the therapy. Now, dose of I131 is calculated in QDH. Clear? Now, advantages no surgery is required, compliance is better, painless. Okay, metastasis of thyroid cancer can also be prevented by this method. Disadvantage which was it is a slow process, highly teratogenic. Okay, so contraindicated in case of pregnancy. It is contraindicated in young patient because they require thyroxine for growth. Now indication, first is your thyroid cancer, surgery is not possible or patient is not willing to undergo surgery. So you can use radioactive therapy. 
thyroid cancer metastasis you can also use this drug method for Graves disease due to overactive thyroid follicles which is not controlled by your carbimazole so you can undergo this therapy hot nodule that is a specific part of gland become overactive so if surgery is done then we have to remove normal part also so radio therapy is used for this hot nodule now some precautions so it is contraindicated in patient less than 35 years of age it is contraindicated in pregnancy risk of thyrotoxicosis due to more release of t3 and t4 so start thionamides before i31 therapy iodine therapy graft gg treatment by iodine 131 can increase your risk of orbitopathy after stopping iodine therapy patient keep on emitting nuclear rays for one month so avoid contact with the family members okay so and lithium lithium in with t4 release from thyroid gland so if patient is taking lithium that will increase the release of iodine from gland okay so there will be prolonged action so use less iodine dose along with lithium so you can use lithium because it will lead to use of less iodine okay now coming to the hypothyroidism for hypothyroidism t4 you can give t3 given okay this is the liver thyroxine this is known as thyronine it is given through oral or iv route it is through iv route it has an increased plasma protein binding so decrease free form of for action it has decreased uh, plasma protein binding so more free form is available for this drug clear it has decreased affinity for thyroid receptors it has increased more affinity for thyroid receptors it has low efficiency more efficiency it is a steady state level is achieved in six to seven days a decision one to two days so it is fast action so it is used for maintenance treatment it is used for acute condition clear mechanism of action it is acting on nuclear receptors indications hypothyroidism creatinism goiter mixedema mixedema coma okay so this is all about thyroid disorder thank you